All right, everyone. So I hope everyone is doing well. And yeah, let's go and start our session today. And today we are going through something, you know, so the great news is like, you know, a lot of doctor has passed um, from Shares Medical Academy. That's the good news right now. Yeah, as you all can see. And we are going to have a recall class today. Um, like, I know we are also starting a new recall batch, like, you know, MC batch 53. And uh, many of you have uh, requested uh, to know about the class schedule of this new batch, actually. So the new batch schedule is kind of looking like this, actually, if you want to see. Now you can see one thing, like, you know, today's our orientation is definitely. And um, we are starting with some of the latest months, as you all can see that. This is how the plans are given, like, you know, August up to um, somewhere, somewhere even in, even in November, we'll be taking special classes for you. So we're mainly targeting a lot of November candidates, especially here and also February candidates, actually. So these are the target groups. If you have exams, say, in April, maybe you can join later because we may have a batch in January again. Okay, so targeting the March and April exam. Okay, so but for October, uh, November, and the February, December, January, there is no exam. And this is the recall batch that is recommended. All right. Uh, you all must be knowing, like, you know, recall solving is like a, quite a part and parcel, you know, in terms of the AMC and uh, you need to really solve a lot, actually. For those of you joined already in our uh, recall session, perhaps you have received uh, four years of solved files and at the same time, probably, you know, videos at the same time. So we're talking about the recall course here, actually, MC Batch 53. Actually, if you're someone from MC Batch 53, these are some of the updates. Uh, we have also invited uh, some of our regular batch students today to attend this recall session, you know, so so there'll be a combined class only for today. And you know, so that's one of the things. Great. So um, the good news is like, you know, a thousand doctor passed, uh, like uh, for us, like, you know, as an academic achievement and as a mentor, something I feel proud for all of you what we have achieved. And nearly, you know, I know nearly 500 nearly doctors started doing their job actually i know somewhere like uh, nearly 400 24 30 because some we can't trace back actually you know because they came take service go away the feeling is not same for everyone but most people they are they update us actually you know uh, so i mean we'll keep you helping i mean uh, thank you so much for joining Shares Medical Academy, we try to remain active and helpful as much as possible to all the IMGs. Uh, it doesn't really over, I mean, just with MC part one, there's part two, we have courses, but uh, whatever it is, like anytime, any suggestions, me and my team, we always try to help you guys actually. Even if courses also have um, CPD, I mean, say technically if you have clinical gap, so you can also uh, achieve CPD points, like, you know, for three months or five months, those courses you are attending. So you can also apply for CPD points. So maximum we can give five months. So that's a very big number if you're living and not doing job, especially this can be a very good choice. So part one, part two separately, you can get a lot of CPD. But one more thing, uh, very, very important to remember, I have told in my YouTube channel, maybe I can turn on my video, I'm okay. Yeah. Um, I have told in my YouTube channel uh, multiple times that uh, make sure you don't have a bigger clinical gap, okay? So this is something you all need to take care of, that one year equals to one month of clinical practice, not talking about CPD, not talking about observership. It's a very purely clinical attachment. So this brings us to this point. Before we starting the session, is still doctors are joining. This brings us in this point that you know, what if you have, you know, uh, perhaps like a, uh, you know, three months, uh, sorry, three years of you know gap. In that case, what to do? Like you know, so if you have like a three years of gap, uh, living in Australia and something like that, perhaps you know, at certain point you have to come back to country and take. Um, 
at least three months because one year equals to roughly is um, one month actually. So which you call recency of practice. I have a very nice video regarding the clinical gap. If you want, you can check in my YouTube channel or after the session, I'll post that one actually. Because these are small things uh, are very important regarding you know how you're proceeding and these particular things are very, very important actually, okay? Because my job is to tell you this, if you're planning to move, some of you get married and quickly move actually what I also see in my experiences. So just after finishing internship, some of you wants to move because um, partner lives there, which is very normal actually. Plus, please make sure if you are a just a fresh intern or you might finish just house job or applicable for Pakistani doctors, they do internship, then do do house job one year actually. So still, I would recommend you take a little bit experience or you go, you come back again. Like you go on and off actually. Don't, yeah, later this can become the major issue. Even you finish the MC1 to this particular things can be the major issue. Now, some people ask a quick question that, is it impossible? Like, you know, if I don't have experience, um, see, I have seen a lot of exceptions because I've been teaching MC since, you know, almost it's been uh, seven years, I guess. So, you know, thousand plus is a very big number, you know. So what I have seen, you know, without experience, I have also seen, but, you know, sometimes you need good references, Sometimes you might be exceptional and maybe right time uh, in the very right place. So without experiences or very fresh intern can also secure job. Uh, I have seen that one, but that's an exception and exceptions are not example. Yeah, like example, I might have seen in my, you know, six, seven years of MC teaching, like um, perhaps 20, 25 people, they don't have any experiences, but they managed to get into the system after passing the MC. So that is possible, like, um, as I mentioned in some exceptional cases. Okay. So these are the deals and we'll talk about a lot of things in coming days. You know, it's not only that MC teaching, but I'm, I'm trying to put you a lot of important aspects. Uh, if you see, we have a job related videos in our YouTube channel. So that is, you can also have a look actually. Specialist pathway, we don't discuss here. Please go to my YouTube channel and there's a relevant video and you can ask me a question in the comment section about specialist pathway. Actually, it's a bit complex pathway. Personally, I don't deal or give any, don't give any personal services on that. Um, if you're interested, I mean, you can go check that video. Whatever information I know, I put it there actually. All right. Some Australian services may give... Um, separate service for specialist pathway, okay? I mean, I personally, I feel not that expert, like, you know, there's a lot of paperwork for specialist actually, you know, so it's only someone knows who, uh, who is super, super expert or deal with particularly these things, all right? So this is like particular thing. From my experience, again, another thing, if I want to uh, add something as a fact, if you're a specialist and if you think you really can work directly in Australia, um, it is a lit little less expected. Um, so in a specialist pathway, what I have seen mostly, direct specialist pathway, I mean, being an Asian consultant, directly be <clears throat> being a consultant in Australia, usually does not happen because you don't know the system, how system works in Australia. You don't know what is the responsibility of a RMO, SMO, SHO, uh, different level jobs. So consultant means you need to run a department. You are not really capable. You need to believe that um, when you are running a department, this is how not things work. Now, what exceptions can be said? So I have seen few consultant, Asian consultant who become successful, um, getting full specialist uh, because they have experience working in those first world countries. Now, what are the first world countries? First world countries means uh, UK, Ireland, uh, USA, all right. So anything which is the English speaking countries or the first world for the medical, you know, advancement actually, which uh, Australia recognize or UK recognize, like, like those are vice versa. So I have seen those type of people get succeed directly. I mean, consultant in Asian countries directly become consultant there. Okay, so this is one thing. Otherwise, many of the, you know, people I found those have been good consultant, maybe ICU consultant, anesthesiologist. Anesthesiologist, I think I found the biggest number uh, joining in Australia. So 
what the pickup is called a short time specialist pathway okay short time specialist looks more like a gajini film short time memory loss is actually kind of like that so like short time specialist pathway so it's given for short time and how short is that it's given for two year but within one year they will start buzzing you actually buzzing you for what buzzing you for to finish um perhaps or secure the visa how um in, in those cases you might need mc part one again actually so i remember i was in sydney one doctor was keep calling me doctor i want to really meet you actually please give me some time i said okay i'm going near the opera house just for work maybe in between so he said like you know in between if I, when you were going you know there will be a station like this you know so it, you know i live little nearby i can come to that station oh, okay so meeting point and fixed and then there's a coffee shop okay thank you so in that case <clears throat> we just sit for a while and you know we were talking that you know so he said that he was trying he get to know about me a little later so one time he tried and he got failed and his visa is finishing so he wants to finish the exam part one as soon as possible to secure his next visa for the job he's already uh, under limited registration working in australia so you see without amc he was working under limited registration so limited registration after amc one you can apply without mc you can also apply you know if you are very much capable actually you know so this for short time and if they really need that position like example nicu say an anesthesia say this some sort of position so you can always check guys you know is a quick tip you know there is a um, website called indeed.com or i also have a video if you see like job related uh, what to do after mc1 you can find it out from youtube my youtube channel sharia ahmed shujo you know you can find that one so you can go and check that video there are more job websites uh, perhaps i have posted so maybe you can have a look on that one one important thing the maximum websites or maximum hospital you will apply job uh the higher the number of possibility of getting a job okay so this is one thing this is from many of my candidates who got the job they said the same thing the maximum application don't be overconfident that you know you passed mc1 mc2 and job will come to you it's not like that you have to keep applying keep going for the interviews this is very very important actually all right all right yeah okay so you'll you'll find it uh definitely check my youtube channel and um, perhaps you can subscribe and keep watching more videos i know there's like i think over 225 videos been posted so you can just keep searching whatever you need i think you'll find there actually three more systems um, in australia to next level after mc1 so after mc1 mc2 is in one option okay then second option is a we call it the gps okay you need more experience more than 5 years of experience so it is called the pesci route okay p e s c i pesci we might make a separate video on pesci in coming days actually it's not that my of my expertise the pesci side okay so pesci and thirdly wba workplace based assessment actually but it is applicable only in seven hospitals for workplace based assessment you need to already start working in australia so imagine like you know in our countries like there is like md fcps this type of like example md courses so wba think in that way like a, a program and your small exams are fixed actually in the programs okay so it's more like that actually okay so, but it is for one year so in one year they will take you a lot of exams this that and they will clear you you know so you can also finish the um everything like so you can bypass the mc2 if you get chance with the wba uh you can also find a wba related video workplace you can type in that way workplace best assessment then type my name sharir ahmed you will find that video in my youtube channel actually so workplace best assessment all right so three options again mc2 then the gp pesky route and the another is the wb there's some miscellaneous sites out there in australia that's like you know you can work as doctor's assistant this that um in early days actually that's a different thing okay so these are like you know few of the things thank you so much doctors for sharing uh the linked videos in the zoom chat option yeah um so good luck to you and 
you need more experience for the GP. If you have a personal question, we'll come back to you on that one. We are here today because to do this particular class, you know, this 16th August, we're starting batch 53 recall based and we're targeting October, November and February, uh, mostly white like number of November candidates uh, will be joining for sure. I mean, we believe like last November, there was 60 doctor pass. Like, so we are up to break our own record. Don't know, 60 is a very big number to break record, right? Previously it was 50. So we don't know we can break it or not. Okay. So that's up to you. I mean, I hope you guys can help us breaking that record, actually, you know, so that's the thing. But, I, but I'm pretty sure a very big number is appearing this November as well. All right. So this is the thing, as you all can see, this is the class routine. I have already uh, posted this one or will be posted shortly. Okay. So this is how the routine, even you see, like, you know, during exam month we have also keep something for you actually all right okay so this is how a perfect routine looks like and some special tips will be given on these things and this is how the routine has been designed now routine has been designed to solve one year of zoom class and on joining you'll be receiving you know the previous four year classes and the solve file whatever we are conducting you'll receiving anything actually if you're academic candidate you, you might get more uh, discount on joining actually if you're already academic candidate if not like you know you can join previously it was 300 you know we have put this one thinking the dollar price has inclined a bit so we have put it as uh, 250 like you know yeah uh, compared to our success rate and things like that you know we still keep things i believe are quite reasonable for the img even if you go to australia like things are quite pricey you know but they even don't have you know quarter of our students and even the success rate i would say anyways let's go and start i mean um, we like to start this thing the file you know is, uh, is waiting for you and uh, please let me know bring some energy in the class by telling like if you are ready uh, let's go in the comment section you can always bring some more energy to us actually by doing that great are you ready guys i mean it's sometimes it's good to say yes ready uh more shout out will come out <clears throat> if i ask in that way who wants to pass the mc exam and let's see you know how big wise you can scream actually you know so that's like that's how you know more uh you know thing will come up actually it's, it's you know, and sometimes we say in our uh, religion inshallah actually so i mean uh, inshallah you all will pass actually definitely all right uh many passing i believe you can pass too actually that's uh, my belief actually and as i mentioned that this is the number m can make you believe that you know if they have did that like you can definitely do it all right so let's go and start the session yes i mean be respectful to teachers and whatever these things are this is the location for us actually even though i'm currently in you can all be in australia in 2020 so i for my location is switch over you can't really always stress me actually you know so that's like one of the thing and great uh, but my main office in the dhaka many of you have visited please let me know in the comment section if you have ever visited our office actually yeah so in the zoom comment section or youtube i mean if you have ever visited our office actually of course i know only possible for bangladeshi doctors uh please let us know if you have ever visited yeah yeah but you know i hope to meet many of you i think in 2024 i hope by this time you will pass because we will do a i think hopefully a big program in australia i think inviting all our can you know previous candidates yeah so let's see how it can be done actually let's go and start the session this is the first thing uh coming up today you know great all right, 11th week pregnant lady and um, CVP karyotyping report came as 46XY. Okay, let's start. You can put your answers in the comment section. So what to do next? So you need to think about like 46XY. Is that a really good news always actually? So in that case, the answer like, you know, uh, it's not down actually, sorry for uh, adding that line actually. So mostly 46XY, you know, so it's more, you know, we will think this is at this point, 
it just need to reassure because 47 xy means what 47 xy is the normal thing like it, it can be problematic if it comes like 47 xxy right or 45 xo right so is it indicating something 45 xxy is what guys 45 xxy what do you think so 45 xxy that's the you know, Pliny filter is one of the and 45x, so it can be Turner actually. So we don't want anything like that. And also some cases, um, you know, when you do the CVP, it's like mainly we are worried about the Down syndrome actually. And so in this case, can we call it Down syndrome? It is a no bit because it is a 46xy, right? So this is the main thing. So we have seen previously, uh, they might ask you for investigating what to do next. I mean, previous history of Down syndrome or suspected mental retardation. So we can do CVS test and we can do, you know, uh, further amniocentesis and this type of test, you know, would be also available in that case. Okay. So you just keep this thing in mind. In this case, as you know, we're going with the reassurance. Next coming thing is like, this is one thing. A neonate systolic murmur in the third intercostal and the fixed split actually no cyanosis what is the likely diagnosis now here is a term guys please check it fixed split so fixed split and also term is a systolic murmur so what is the likely diagnosis so in this case the likely diagnosis what do you think the likely diagnosis of fixed split is mostly related to this particular term asd so fixed split is mostly related to this particular term ASD. So, systolic murmur, uh, left intercostal space, and fixed splitting. So, all suspecting this can be a ASD case actually. Okay. So, our correct answer would be ASD here. I hope that is clear to all of you. Uh, guys, do you want me to? Because, uh, you know, how I like to take classes, you know, also it is important that. I sometimes try to give the more differential. Do you want me to give more some differentials related to some congenital heart diseases? Okay, will that be okay? I mean, a little bit uh, quick revision, right? Like a little bit quick revision actually on some congenital heart diseases. Okay, so let's go for it. Okay. Little quick, I won't take more than three, four minutes. This is how a summary slide for us looks like. Okay, great. Come to this one, congenital heart disease. Now, congenital heart disease, you know, if you can see here, uh, we divide it into two ways, right? Cyanotic and acyanotic. Like again, cyanotic has 5T, we remember, like um, like truncus arteriosus, like uh, tricuspid atresia, like all things with T. Then more important ones are tetralogy of fallot. More important one with T is cyanotic is uh, transposition of the great vessel, right? So these are the cyanotic and there are acyanotic. Among the acyanotic, ASD, VST, PDA, right? These are the main acyanotic. Now, these questions, particularly those you can see in the green has been tested so far. Example, you will be given a cyanotic case and newborn with a hollow systolic murmur and later who develop breathlessness. What is the diagnosis? VST, hollow systolic murmur, more common with VST. Another important point, VST is most common. Can I also add this point? Congenital heart disease, which is the most common congenital heart disease. Answer, VST. Is their most common congenital heart disease? That is VST. That is correct. All right. Second thing is like if you see, is a innocent murmur, right? Second thing is a innocent murmur. Innocent murmur, you all must be knowing about innocent murmur, soft, systolic murmur right soft systolic murmur now even as a gp if you know that this murmur is a innocent murmur would you like to refer quick question would you like to refer like this is many times doctors make mistake that oh okay it says uh, innocent murmur so just reassurance so answer is not reassurance here answer is refer here so innocent murmur always refer because innocent murmur can be pathological until proven otherwise. Clear? So this is another popular question in the exam. Next, coming with some of the cyanotic problems which has been tested in past. With a six-week kid, always remember the six-week kid is tetralogy of fallot often we have seen in the question. Okay. Six-week murmur and cyanosis and there's a spatial spell. This spell means actually like, like some 
you know, uh, some Hilni type of you know, position like a spell. Did you know about the Fallow spell? Have you ever heard about this term? I'm sure you did. All right. So in that case, you know, it can be tetralogy of Fallow. They can be in particular position. This is called the, you know, like some squatting position or Hilni position, you know. In the gym, if you go and do the squatting, that's position you mean. Next is a, like, you know, the most dangerous of everything. What do you think, guys? The most dangerous of everything. I mean, baby don't survive more than one day. Baby, you know, develop, parents are happy. Immediately they see a blue baby who is having breathing difficulty and baby is deteriorating. Answer, transposition of the great vessel. You see, developmentally, you know, aorta and the pulmonary trunk that, you know, comes like that and last moment it twisted actually developmentally that's why pulmonary trunk is in pulmonary trunk position and out you see in outer position this you know developmentally if this twist not happens then this there is a switch over between pulmonary trunk and the aorta now imagine your uh Instead of your pulmonary trunk, you are having aorta in that position. So all that deoxygenated blood are going to the periphery. If the baby is going to survive, is because it's not going for purification. Focus all the deoxygenated blood directly going into the periphery. So according to definition of cyanosis, this will be much cyanosis. Now some cases it can be saved. Like uh, if there is a, another holes actually, like if it's a direct line, same as in like transposition of the great vessel but if they're like you know they were supposed to die because all the blood's directly going to the periphery but there's extra hole in the heart like vsd and asd there'll be exchange of the blood so baby can survive more than one day if tga vsd asd isn't it unique that you know you have other diseases more diseases but you are surviving eventually they don't also survive uh, it's very difficult and complicated case if it is a transposition of the Great added. Next coming is a shunt reversal cases. Shunt reversal cases like means what? That acyanotic heart diseases turn into cyanotic actually. Acyanotic turn into cyanotic. Last time a question came, this means what? Like right to left shunt or left to right shunt? They asked this one. So development of cyanosis, what do you think guys? Is it a left to right shunt or right to left shunt? There, there was a question came in recent time. So, development of this, you know, cyanotic things, actually. Yes, you all are right. It's like, you know, right to left, you know. Yeah, great. So, no worries on that one. You can check our um, heart disease-related known. There's more details are given there, actually. So, shunt reversal cases, there can be acin manger. Another thing is a endomethacin. In endomethacin cases, there will be machinery murmur. Did you ever heard about this term? Machine-like murmur. So machinery murmur goes with the patent ductus arteriosus. Okay, so you will look forward to this clue in the exam. Uh, there's another question given, boot shape heart, and there were a few, you know, fallor spell and this that was given. It was a tetralogy of fallor second. Management, there's medical management of tetralogy of fallor. There is surgical management. Medical management fails, we go for surgery. Okay, another thing, a female, I mean, uh, like, you know, uh, kid, uh, in that case, you know, develops hypertension and unequal blood pressure. It can be coarctation of the aorta. Okay, this is another thing. So this can be coarctation of the aorta. So hypertension, female and unequal blood pressure. Uh, this can be coarctation of the aorta. All right. So this is the thing, guys. Have a look on our chat option. If class monitors, you can help anyone so that'll be fine actually i hope so i'm audible right is it loud and clear i mean just checking one time testing testing one two three four loud and clear you know please write loud and clear yeah all right great yeah all right if you're joining i mean if you're having issues so please switch over to laptop some cases it will be more clear to you for sure some cases check your also internet because some people are trying with a data connection so you might hear less sound in that case. Last but not the least, left hypoplastic heart disease. There will not be murmur, but it will be less severe than uh, the this TGA. I'll try to post um, separately a little note on the left hypoplastic heart disease after the class today, actually. All right. Great. So these are the particular things. Is these things are helpful, guys? I mean, we just, 
you know, drop you down, drag down you to a little bit. Yeah, to some of the particular place actually. Okay, so neonet systematic um, like this thing, fixed split, so ASD, and we just discussed about few of the marmot things. All right. Great. Moving forward from this one. Uh, okay, so we, I think, have a direct question here actually. Sorry for that. All right. 16 year, I mean, living with a boyfriend. So I, I put it as a uh, educational more actually. 16 year living boyfriend requesting contraception and said that uh, she knew about the contraception through the internet. So will you give her like an oral contraceptive pill? That's the question. Okay, 16 year minor, but can they ask for contraception to the GP over phone or internet or whatever it is? The answer is yes, they can. There's a term called Gillick competency. You know, if you ever heard about this Gillick competency. So under the Gillick competency, you know, um, certain decisions like a contraceptive, uh, something related to pregnancy, they can take some decisions of their own from the age of the 16. I mean, normally it's supposed to be 18, but from the 16, they can also do a lot of things actually. So 16 year, you know, uh, they can ask their doctor for contraception. Law might vary even state to state. This is another thing. Okay. So law might vary from state to state actually. Uh, if the same thing about 14 year, like good question, uh, asking about the contraceptive and this, that thing. First of all, like, you know, check about her safety. Okay, so this is a more important concern in that case. It's more about her safety and uh, try to teach her more about the sexually transmitted disease and this and that actually. So you have to be careful if 14 years, 40 year actually, you really can't give leaning, you know. So like just tell her that, you know, to be more careful, tell her more about the sexually transmitted diseases okay so yes educate her more actually actually is it the right time or not yeah so that's one of the thing all right so law might vary from a uh, different area to area so also confidentiality important is this thing uh, in this case will the doctor is going to tell her mother okay is it like you know doctor is going to tell her mother the answer is perhaps no Doctor is not going to tell her mother in this case. This is another very, very important thing. So this brings us to one of those points. So 16 year living or not living with the mother, it doesn't matter. The doctor is not going to tell any of these things actually because she's 16 year actually. But even with the similar things actually, if it is about a uh, abortion decision and they are living with the parents, now the thing is there. All right, abortion, and uh, then what do you think, actually, if it's an abortion case and living with the parents, actually? So in that case, do you need to inform in that case, actually? So in that case, yes, you do, because they are under the custody of the parents, and it's a uh, can be a complex procedure, actually. So you need to inform that. Now, 16-year living with boyfriend, 16-year living with boyfriend, in that case, is it necessary to inform the parents actually living with her boyfriend and she's planning for abortion? It's not uh, necessary to inform unless, unless she put her emergency contact as parents. You understand my point in Australia, if you go in or any first world country, if you go, when you, you know, sign the forms, um, there is an emergency contact. Okay. So emergency contacts always has to inform if you're going for something or if she denies that okay no need for emergency contact in this case he will contact that of another person in that case they will reach another person actually but if you don't change it before the surgery they will automatically contact the emergency person all right clear everyone so this is like emergency contact is very important actually all right great coming to this one next question all right Neonet and jaundice, uh, more relevant notes you will find in our notes section, there are contraceptive notes. Please have a look on that one. Neonatal jaundice after birth and mother is so positive. What is the cause actually? Interesting question. So it's a neonatal jaundice after birth and mother is O positive. Uh, too short sometimes, uh, some recalls we can understand, but this is how it is actually, you know. 
All right. So here we go. In this case, actually, let's find out like, you know, what to do. Um, yes. So this one is a, as you all can see, this is ABO incompatibility. ABO incompatibility. This is the thing. Now, let me tell you something about ABO incompatibility. Uh, ABO and the RH. ABO. Now, in case of ABO incompatibility, mother's blood group and the kid's blood group, what do you think? Mother's group is O positive. What you are expecting in kid's blood group? Some cases. Will it be O or will it be A or B? That's my question. If mother is O, then uh, the kid's blood group would be A or B in case of AB incompatibility. How about RH? Like if mother is O negative, what you are expecting in the kid in that case? RH incompatibility. So in that case, it's the same blood group. So one is positive, one is negative. All right. So is it clear to everyone the difference between the ABO and difference between the RH actually? This is the main important thing. So it's few additional information, incompatible blood type which does not match with the receiver's blood. All right. Uh, here is a thing, pregnancy concern. So it can risk the like disease of the hemolytic of the newborn can happen. Okay, so this line you need to remember. Preventive measures can be blood typing, cross matching, as we all do as a doctor, RH testing during pregnancy. So this can be some of the important things you can do. Great. All right. So ABO and RH incompatibility. All right. So there's two things we just learned: ABO incompatibility, and one is a RH related thing. Actually, so like in I think it's a med med school old topic. Example: O neg you know, mother and then O positive baby, so they can develop some problem. But is it in the first pregnancy? A quick question about RH, you know, incompatibility, if you see, is it the first pregnancy? No, it's not. Okay, like second or third pregnancy. But AB incompatibility, can, can it happen in the first pregnancy? AB incompatibility can happen in first pregnancy. Yeah, it, it can be actually. In ABO cases, like example, say mother is O positive, the baby can be A or B positive actually. All right. So this is how the things are actually. Next question. Irregular cycle and, you know, you can see LMP three months ago came with a severe vomiting to the ED after initial resuscitation. Next step in the management. All right. So interesting question, as you all can see here. Okay, so we picked up this one as a beta HCG. So LMP for LMP three months ago, last menstrual period. We always ask this question in you. Female came, like, you know, when is your LMP? So if it is three months ago, so definitely, definitely choose the beta HCG in that case, actually. So vomiting, uh, late LMP, you know. So, you know, you should definitely look forward to um first rule it out actually what is going on actually like rule it out it's a pregnancy then the question coming it's a molar pregnancy and all this thing yeah it's a suspected you know first trimester excess vomiting it's always chance of molar pregnancy is higher actually because it's a severe vomiting it is mentioned so lmp three months ago and severe vomiting and the very high chances it can be with molar pregnancy right great all right moving forward uh, parvaginal spotting and POS six weeks ago and abdominal pain vomiting came to the emergency department. What is the feature if uh, present, if indicating escalation of the management? A bit incomplete, but I think it's a shoulder tip pain. Now, what you are suspecting? I mean, this shoulder tip pain is an indicator of what? I mean, if that's present, I mean, we think I quite a... So shoulder tip pain, you know, this thing, you know, we are thinking is more about in which cases that can be related to this shoulder tip pain. Have you ever heard ectopic pregnancy, there can be shoulder tip pain in some cases? Okay, because we know we are... Uh, looking forward to escalation of the management like if one of those feature is present 
All right. So if you see the Linian Jones, it's it's mentioned actually. So ruptured cases, yes. We're talking about the ruptured cases, definitely. So uh, it's a possibility of the ectopic pregnancy, maybe the rupture just started. So rupture started, it will lead to peritoneal bleeding in any way, right? So uh, that's the thing. So shoulder tip pain, please keep that one in mind. Uh, similar compare and contrast. Let me tell you something, compare and contrast. We have seen a abdominal pain case, you know, um, maybe last year there was a question and they mentioned like, you know, which one will lead you to like uh, emergency surgery? There's a lot of options given. The one of the option was given a free gas under the diaphragm. Do you think free gas under the diaphragm is a very important parameter to take the patient for the surgery, right? So free gas under the diaphragm, no question asked, go for a laparotomy surgery, okay? No question asked in that case. Like you don't have to think much because it's a sign that patient is in deep trouble. Another question we have seen that uh, it was given uh, abdominal pain and abdominal distension. Something was given like that. And they give an X-ray, okay? By X-ray, we can always detect any obstruction or any many other things. So we found there was some sort of um, features of obstruction. And we know that cecum is often affected. And it was given and also mentioned in the question, the cecal size is 15 centimeter. So sickle, sickle diameter is 15 centimeter. Now, if sickle diameter is 15 centimeter, it, if it is given, uh, is that indicate anything? Okay. So sickle diameter, if it is more uh, bigger in size, there is a size range is given 13 or over, 13 or over. So if 13 or over, that's more, you can think as a volvulus, or megacolon or obstruction, whatever it is you think. But sickle, this particular diameter, when it is more than 13, that is an indication you need to definitely go for surgery. What I want to say, that 13 or more than 13, you definitely need to go for surgery. Please remember this because it has been tested as a question in past. Okay, so just try to compare a lot of similar sort of thing. Clear everyone? So here it was the shoulder tip pain, Another we discussed as an abdominal pain, and this is that more than 13 actually. All right, great. Uh, there's a parameter range actually. Pathology, you <laughs> look forward actually to enhance, you know. So there's a lot of criteria and guideline actually. You know, it's like it's very basic. You know, if, it, if it's too big, it, it will bust out at certain points. All right, it's a very basic thing actually. 13 or more than 13. I repeat again 13 or more than 13. Okay, great. Great. All right. Next question is going up, coming up actually. 16 year girl and in a four month of the duration of recurrent headache, vomiting, mother diagnosed with a brain tumor uh, at 60 years. Uncle has aneurysm rupture. What is the appropriate management? Please look at this question carefully. 16 year form of recurrent headache. Mother Daniel's brain tumor and uncle had an aneurysm rupture. All right. Now, what type of screening is this? A quick question to ask here. What sort of screening are we looking forward here? Are you going for a brain tumor screening or are you going for an aneurysm screening? My quick question is here. Have you ever heard about brain tumor screening program in 16 years? Not really. But have you heard about like in young age, aneurysm can be there? That is a yes. So aneurysm screening program we heard about. Brain tumor screening program is not really actually. So, all right. Now, in this case, uh, can we say this? Like it, two family members is having issues actually. So, subarachnoid hemorrhage, you know, screening, we call it. Okay. Subarachnoid hemorrhage screening for, not for regular patients, for 
high risk patients. Subunit hemorrhage screening we are going through. Now, in next page, we'll tell you the details. Now, let's find out here with more reference uh, taken from uh, RSCGP and different guidelines. For high risk individual, regular imaging studies like cerebral angiography and MRI is recommended to monitor the condition of the blood vessel and detect any changes that could lead to aneurysm formation or rupture. So if we come back here, we don't have any option of, um, you know, this thing like cerebral angiography in the option. Uh, I think two things together is not usually given, but even if it is given, I would have go for the MRI actually. Even, even the second option is also given some cases to confuse you because cerebral angiography we go later after doing the basic imaging actually. Right. So this is the thing. So answer is here according to guideline at all these things. This is only applicable for the high risk patients. Those have, you know, very particular family history or history of dying because of aneurysm. This is a higher possibility. If you see like uh, uh, this aneurysm, which is in the anterior communicating artery in subarachnoid hemorrhage, um, there's a more higher possibility that in next generation, it can be also present, right? So it is fine to do the, you know, risk assessment or risk screening. Guys, about the risk assessment, risk screening, um, are you familiar with, you know, cardiac uh, risk assessment? Are you familiar with cardiac risk assessment? Very, very important, all right? So I hope so that is a yes. If not, you can check it from our video channel library okay so we'll post it later you know you know to show you it's very important you might get that question even more important question like cardiac risk assessment it is not that difficult yes okay coming to this one um jmo had a needle injury do you know what is jmo do you know what is jmo Junior medical officer. This is how you apply for in Australia, right? Junior medical officer, senior medical officer, register, you know. So, but junior medical officer is probably the positions you will apply. Okay. Uh, given a listing injury, patient has a IV drug abuser. JMO is not sure about the vaccination. Now, what to do in this case? All right. So in this case, you know, what we have chosen is this one, like option C. All right. Great. Guys, needle stick related on this particular topic. Needle stick related. A lot of type of topic can come in the main exam, actually. This is one of the versions. So anything related to needle stick can come. We have seen in another one in past. Uh, a surgeon during doing surgery, there was a needle stick injury. The patient... Is there is a possibility for this patient with, with HIV um, positive. Immediately what the doctor can do, like there was a question like the doctor was performing surgery. So immediately what the doctor can do, like, you know, go and do the test immediately or uh, immediately he can, you know, uh, turn off his gloves and wash the hands actually with the iodine and all these things. So the answer is there, like, you know, so immediate you know, he will wash the hand with provident iodine and all this thing. This is the initial important management. And later, is it over or is it risk-free by doing that? No. He will go for some test regarding the HIV. Example, there are a lot of type of tests available like ELISA test or Western blood test. So, so you have to do now. I mean, as is, if that's the surgeon has to do now. Then, you know, after certain time, after six weeks, weeks, then after three months, then if all came negative, then you can say uh, no HIV. Clear this one, doctors? Because initially doing the test does not in indicate that the person is a disease-free because there is a phase, we call it window phase, actually. There is a phase, we call it window phase. All right. Uh, some dear doctors, I mean, it's like just for things like, you know, just uh, please check a few things in the Google, actually, you know, you, you know, like what do you mean, actually? All right. 
Great. More things will come in future. Like, you know, like, you know, this is somewhere related to uh, uh, this particular, but a lot of question you will find from the Titana. So please remember this chart particularly. Uh, this is the compare contrast chart. I'm just showing here actually, because with the needle stick, we can see that one. So we can also may have perhaps a lot of questions related to tetanus, And we do have seen a lot of questions related to tetanus in past. The old scenario is, you know, if you don't know the vaccination history, see, not everyone goes for vaccination. There are many people that don't believe in vaccine. So incomplete vaccination history, and there is a bad owned, like say dirty owned. Now what to do? You, you have to give TT plus TIG. This is how question will come. All right. This is how questions will come actually, you know, TT and the TIG. This is like something. All right. Next thing is coming up, you know, if you can see, if you already know about the history and uh, vaccination within five years, no need of anything. And, but if it is little uh, in between this range group for dirty owns, you might need the TT. Okay. So this is the thing. So some cases you might need the TT. Uh, TIG most cases not needed. If incomplete vaccination history, TT, TIG, both can be needed. A lot of tetanus filtered question you might find. In the exam, actually, yes. All right. Now, this is a similar kind of question. If a medical student had a needle stick injury vaccinated for hepatitis B, patient refusing to check status. Now, what? Apply for medical tribunal to check status, discuss the benefit and risk of PP, and uh, check serology, give PP. Okay. Or without knowing him, all right. All right, this one I saw many of you have been going through the D option actually. I would go with the B option in this one actually because you need to, you know, see this is tricky exam and they might always came up with another option which might, you know, yeah, so this is the thing. Uh, no, 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 not medical tribunal here for just for this thing actually, you know. Please understand these things. These are the tricky things you need to educate him. For every single thing, you, you can't really go to AFRA. You can't go to like medical tribunal. You can't go there, you know, so that's the thing. So discuss, you know, just make him understand, you know, that, you know, discuss the benefit and risk of the B, you know. So B is a better choice always. Like B, you'll find many questions. I'm telling you in M6, I mean, remember this thing that when you go to the exam, you know, you will find many things like similar to this actually like you know that uh, discuss the pros and do you remember um, one or two similar type of thing example like one of the things related to you know prostate cancer actually you know is quick question is prostate screening is necessary my my first question is prostate screening is necessary much answer is a no Prostate screening, we don't do like colon cancer, breast cancer. We don't do screening like that. If the patient comes and tells, okay, I have a prostate cancer in my family, this, that, please do a test. Then we can think if patient demands, actually on demand. All right. So in usually we don't do it. And if the patient comes and asking for prostate cancer screening, they, they often give an option. Tell the patient, tell the patient about the pros and cons about the prostate cancer screening. Which one uh, option you will choose? Tell the patient it's not necessary. Tell the patient about the pros and cons of the prostate cancer screening. Answer, tell the patient about the pros and cons of the prostate cancer screening. Very simple. So uh, you will find a lot of questions like this. You'll find a lot of questions like this. Some exceptional cases, you, you directly go to AFRA. Say example, if you find your colleague is taking drugs, eliciting drugs, now, is this thing too important to report or is this thing educate him, make him understand this thing? What do you think? So someone is taking drugs. So drug in these countries are very, very, I mean, everywhere it's like, you know, very bad, but here it's very serious matter. So these things you need to report directly and not reporting to anything normally report to EFRA. In that case, okay. So drug related thing, drug related thing, you can report to APHRA. This is the thing. Now, like other cases to the supervisors, all other things, like example, a doctor who is performing sexual intercourse with a nurse, you know, 
or he's uh, he's an alcoholic, maybe this, that, and a lot of things. So these initial things, you know, usually we inform the supervisor. But if it's like a more serious conduct, like drug, drug is, has been taken, you know, extremely serious in these countries. So if you get caught with the dr drug, you know, your life is over. Okay, so please remember this thing. Your colleagues, any other complaint, you go to supervisor, most cases. For like example, if it's a nurse, nursing supervisor, if it's a medical doctor, doctor supervisor, you understand. But in some exceptional cases, for like example, the drug, you now you go to the AFRA. Clear everyone? Okay, move forward to the next one. There's more information about the little stick injury. As you see, few informations are given here, actually. So if needle stick injury, you wash hands. This is the first thing, seek medical help, uh, risk assessment, evaluate factors like needle type, patient's health status, and determine need for PP based on the assessment. It's significant for HIV transmission, PP may involve antiretroviral drugs. Clear? I mean, needle stick injury related? All right, excellent, guys. All right, so history of MI on aspirin and came to the routine checkup and cholesterol is, I can see, 5.5. .5. What is the next course of action? Hmm. So uh, it's obvious, right? Like cholesterol 5.5, .5, it's given in millimole, guys. So don't get confused, actually. It's given in millimole because milligram and millimole is different. So in this case, very simple, add simvastatin, very simple. Question at simvastatin. Okay, I just added few things regarding the simvastatin, like you know how it works. If you want to know more, simvastatin. Not too many things are required, but who can take in adult with a high cholesterol? Like this may be your uh, knowing area. Adult with high cholesterol individual risk of heart disease and consult a doctor for so one tablet a day and some precautions you need to remember. Like it can interact with alcohol and grape juice. Very important actually. Mm -hmm. Great. Little bit of information. All right. Great. So certain points uh, we are also posting in YouTube. We'll close that one YouTube part right now. Thank you so much. All right. Just give me a second. Mm -hmm. 